Imagine waking up tomorrow feeling more alive, more connected, and more at peace than ever before. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, what if I told you that this isn't just a dream, but a reality that's within your reach? Today, we're diving into 10 simple yet powerful spiritual practices that can transform your life, starting right now. These aren't complex rituals or hard-to-grasp concepts. They're straightforward, easy-to-do actions that anyone can incorporate into their daily routine. And the best part? You don't need any special skills or knowledge to get started. All you need is an open mind and a willingness to try something new. Think about it for a moment. How many times have you wished for a way to feel more grounded, more joyful, or more in tune with yourself and the world around you? Well, these ten practices are your ticket to exactly that. They're like secret keys that unlock doors to a more fulfilling life. And the exciting thing is, you can start using these keys today, right after this video, in fact. Now. You might be wondering, can these practices really make such a big difference? The answer is a resounding yes. These aren't just random ideas I've thrown together. They're time-tested spiritual practices that have been used by people all over the world for centuries. They've helped countless individuals find more meaning, joy, and peace in their lives. And now, they're here for you to discover and use. So, are you ready to embark on a journey that could change your life in ways you never thought possible? Are you prepared to unlock your full potential and experience a deeper connection with yourself and the world around you? Great! Let's dive into these ten life-changing spiritual practices starting with the first three that can make an immediate impact on your life. Let's kick things off with a practice that might seem simple at first glance, but has the power to completely shift your perspective. Daily gratitude. Now, when I say gratitude, I'm not talking about writing long poetic thank you notes or making grand gestures. I'm talking about something much simpler and more powerful. Here's what you do. Every day, preferably in the morning, take a moment to think of three things you're thankful for. That's it. Just three things. They don't have to be big, life-changing events. In fact, it's often the small, everyday things that can have the biggest impact when we start to notice and appreciate them. Maybe you're thankful for the warm sunlight streaming through your window. Or perhaps you're grateful for the delicious smell of your morning coffee. It could be something as simple as being thankful for a good night's sleep or the comfort of your favorite sweater. Now you might be thinking, how can something so small make a big difference? Well, here's the magic of gratitude. It trains your brain to look for the good in your life. You see, our brains are naturally wired to focus on the negative. It's a survival mechanism that helped our ancestors stay alert to danger. But in our modern world, this tendency can leave us feeling stressed, anxious, and dissatisfied. Gratitude flips the script. When you actively look for things to be thankful for, you're teaching your brain to spot the positive aspects of your life. It's like you're giving your brain a new pair of glasses. Suddenly, you start seeing all the good things that were always there, but you might have been overlooking. And here's the really cool part. The more you practice gratitude, the more automatic it becomes. You'll start noticing things to be thankful for without even trying that grumpy cashier at the store? 
instead of letting it ruin your mood, you might find yourself feeling grateful for the opportunity to spread a little kindness. That traffic jam on your way to work? You might surprise yourself by feeling thankful for the extra time to listen to your favorite podcast. But the benefits of gratitude don't stop there. Studies have shown that people who practice gratitude regularly experience a whole host of positive effects. They tend to be happier, more satisfied with their lives, and even healthier. Gratitude has been linked to better sleep, improved relationships, and a stronger immune system. And here's a little secret. Gratitude is like a magnet for good things. When you focus on the good in your life, you tend to attract more of it. It's not some mystical force. It's simply that when you're in a positive state of mind, you're more likely to notice opportunities, connect with others, and take actions that lead to positive outcomes. So how do you get started with this powerful practice? It's easy. You can keep a gratitude journal, jotting down three things you're thankful for each day. Or, if writing isn't your thing, you can simply take a moment each morning to think about what you're grateful for. You can even share your gratitude with others, telling your partner, friend, or family member something you appreciate about them can brighten both of your days. Remember, the key is consistency. It might feel a bit forced at first, especially on those days when everything seems to be going wrong. But stick with it. Even on the toughest days, there's always something to be grateful for, even if it's as simple as being grateful for the ability to take a deep breath. As you make gratitude a daily habit, you'll start to notice a shift. The world will seem a little brighter, your problems a little smaller, and your heart a little fuller. And that's the true power of gratitude. It doesn't just change your perspective, it changes your life. Now that we've explored the transformative power of gratitude, let's move on to our second life-changing practice, mindful breathing. This might sound too simple to be effective, but trust me, the impact of this practice can be profound. So what exactly is mindful breathing? At its core, it's the practice of focusing your attention on your breath. It's about becoming aware of the simple act of breathing, something we do all day, every day, without even thinking about it. Here's how you do it. Find a comfortable place to sit or lie down. Close your eyes if you'd like, or keep them open with a soft gaze. Now simply breathe. Don't try to change your breath or make it deeper or slower. Just breathe naturally and pay attention to the sensation of breathing. Notice how the air feels as it enters your nostrils. Feel your chest or belly rise as you inhale and fall as you exhale. If your mind wanders, and it will, that's completely normal. Gently bring your attention back to your breath. That's it. That's mindful breathing. Now you might be wondering, how can something so simple be life-changing? Well, the power of mindful breathing lies in its ability to bring you into the present moment. In our busy, fast-paced world, we spend so much time thinking about the past or worrying about the future that we often miss the only moment we actually have, the present. Mindful breathing acts like an anchor, grounding you in the here and now. It's a way of pressing pause on the constant chatter of your mind and giving yourself a moment of calm. And in that moment of calm, something remarkable happens you start to see things more clearly. When you're caught up in the whirlwind of your thoughts, it's easy to get overwhelmed. Problems can seem bigger than they are, 
emotions can feel more intense, and stress can build up without you even realizing it. But when you take a moment to breathe mindfully, you create a little space between you and your thoughts. It's like taking a step back and observing your mind from a distance. From this perspective, you might notice that the problem that seemed so huge a moment ago isn't actually that bad. You might realize that the anger you were feeling has a sadness underneath it. Or you might simply become aware of tension in your body that you didn't even know was there. But the benefits of mindful breathing go beyond just giving you a new perspective. It actually has a physical effect on your body. When you're stressed or anxious, your body goes into fight or flight mode. Your heart rate increases, your muscles tense up, and your breathing becomes shallow. This is great if you're facing a real danger, but not so helpful when you're just trying to get through your day. Mindful breathing activates your body's relaxation response. It slows down your heart rate, lowers your blood pressure, and reduces the production of stress hormones. In other words, it helps your body shift from fight or flight to rest and digest mode. And when your body is relaxed, your mind follows suit. The great thing about mindful breathing is that you can do it anywhere, anytime. Stuck in traffic? Take a few mindful breaths. Feeling overwhelmed at work? Pause for a moment of mindful breathing. Having trouble falling asleep? You guessed it. Mindful breathing can help with that too. And here's a little tip. You don't need to set aside long periods of time for this practice, although if you can, that's great. Even just a minute or two of mindful breathing can make a difference. In fact, you might want to try setting reminders on your phone to take a mindful breathing break every hour or so throughout your day. As you make mindful breathing a regular part of your routine, you'll likely notice some changes. You might find that you're less reactive to stress. You might become more aware of your emotions and better able to manage them. You might even notice improvements in your physical health. As the relaxation response triggered by mindful breathing can boost your immune system and promote healing. But perhaps the most significant change you'll notice is a growing sense of peace and calm in your life. By regularly returning to your breath, you're training yourself to return to the present moment. And it's in the present moment that we find true peace, not in reliving the past or worrying about the future, but in fully experiencing the here and now. So, take a moment right now. Close your eyes if you'd like and take three slow, mindful breaths. Notice how you feel afterward, that sense of calm, that moment of peace that's always available to you anytime you need it. And that's the true power of mindful breathing. Now that we've explored the internal practices of gratitude and mindful breathing, let's turn our attention outward with our third life-changing practice, Acts of Kindness. This practice is all about spreading positivity and making a difference in the world around you, one small action at a time. When we talk about acts of kindness, we're not talking about grand gestures or heroic deeds. We're talking about the small, everyday actions that can brighten someone's day and create a ripple effect of positivity. It could be as simple as holding the door open for someone, giving a genuine compliment, or helping a neighbor carry their groceries. Now, you might be thinking, how can such small actions really make a difference? Well, that's the beauty of kindness. Even the smallest act can have a big impact. 
Think about it. Have you ever had a day where everything seemed to be going wrong and then someone did something unexpectedly kind for you? Maybe a stranger smiled at you or a co-worker brought you a coffee. Didn't that small act of kindness change the whole tone of your day? That's the power of kindness. It has the ability to lift spirits, change moods, and even turn someone's entire day around. And the best part? It doesn't just affect the person receiving the kindness. It affects you, too. When you perform an act of kindness, your brain releases feel-good chemicals like oxytocin and serotonin. These chemicals not only make you feel good in the moment, but they also contribute to long-term happiness and well-being. In other words, by being kind to others, you're also being kind to yourself. But the benefits don't stop there. Acts of kindness have a way of creating a positive cycle. When someone experiences kindness, they're more likely to pass it on to others. It's like throwing a pebble into a pond. The ripples spread out, touching everything in their path. Imagine this scenario. You decide to buy coffee for the person behind you in line at the coffee shop. That person, touched by your kindness, decides to help a co-worker with a difficult project. The co-worker, feeling appreciative, takes the time to really listen to their teenager's problems that evening. The teenager, feeling heard and understood, is extra patient with their younger sibling. And on and on it goes. Your one small act of kindness has created a chain reaction of positivity. Now, you might be wondering how to incorporate acts of kindness into your daily life. The great thing is, opportunities for kindness are all around us. We just need to start looking for them. Here are a few ideas to get you started. Give genuine compliments. Look for opportunities to sincerely compliment others on their actions, appearance, or character. Practice active listening. When someone is talking to you, give them your full attention. Put away your phone, make eye contact, and really listen to what they're saying. Offer help. If you see someone struggling with something, offer to help. This could be as simple as holding the door open or as involved as helping a friend move. Show appreciation. Take the time to thank people who make your life easier. The bus driver, the mail carrier, the custodian at your office. Perform random acts of kindness. Leave a kind note for someone to find. Pay for a stranger's meal or donate to a cause you care about. Remember, the key is to make kindness a habit. Try to perform at least one act of kindness each day. It doesn't have to be big or time-consuming. Even the smallest act can make a difference. As you make kindness a regular part of your life, you'll likely notice some changes. You might find that you feel happier and more fulfilled. You might notice that your relationships improve as people respond to your kindness. You might even find that you start seeing the world in a more positive light. But perhaps the most profound change you'll experience is a shift in perspective. When you regularly practice kindness, you start to see the interconnectedness of all people. You realize that your actions, no matter how small, have the power to make a real difference in someone's life, and that realization can be truly transformative. In a world that can sometimes feel divided and harsh, acts of kindness are like little beacons of hope. They remind us of our shared humanity and our capacity for compassion. They show us that no matter who we are or what our circumstances might be, we all have the power to make the world a little bit better. So as you go about your day today, look for opportunities to be kind. 
It doesn't have to be anything big or dramatic, just a smile, a kind word, or a small helpful action can be enough. And as you do, know that you're not just changing someone else's day. You're changing your own life and contributing to a kinder, more compassionate world. Remember, kindness is a practice, just like gratitude and mindful breathing. The more you do it, the more natural it becomes. And before you know it, you'll find that kindness isn't just something you do. It's a fundamental part of who you are. As we've explored these first three practices, gratitude, mindful breathing, and acts of kindness, you might be starting to see how they work together to create a more positive, peaceful, and fulfilling life. Gratitude opens your eyes to the good things already present in your life. Mindful breathing helps you stay grounded in the present moment where you can fully appreciate those good things. And acts of kindness allow you to spread that positivity to others, creating a ripple effect of goodness in the world around you. These practices are simple, but their impact can be profound. They have the power to change not just your mood or your day, but your entire outlook on life. They can help you navigate challenges with more grace, approach relationships with more compassion, and find joy in the everyday moments that might otherwise pass you by. But remember, like any skill, these practices take time and consistency to truly make a difference. Don't get discouraged if you don't see dramatic changes overnight. The key is to keep at it, to make these practices a regular part of your daily routine. Even on days when you don't feel like it or when life gets busy and chaotic, try to take just a few moments for gratitude, mindful breathing, or an act of kindness. Over time, you'll start to notice the positive changes accumulating in your life. And here's an encouraging thought. You don't have to perfect at these practices to benefit from them. Every moment of gratitude, every mindful breath, every act of kindness, no matter how small, is making a difference. It's like depositing small amounts of money into a savings account. Over time, those small deposits add up to something significant. As we continue our journey through the remaining seven practices, keep this in mind. Each practice we explore is another tool in your spiritual toolkit, another way to cultivate more peace, joy, and meaning in your life. And the beautiful thing is, these practices don't require any special equipment or circumstances. They're available to you anytime, anywhere. So, are you ready to continue this journey? Are you excited to discover more ways to transform your life and deepen your spiritual practice? Great. Let's move on to our next life-changing practice. Have you ever noticed how refreshed and alive you feel after spending time in nature? There's a reason for that. Our fourth practice is all about connecting with the natural world around us. It's a simple yet profound way to nurture your spirit and find a sense of peace and belonging in the grand scheme of things. Connecting with nature doesn't mean you have to plan a week-long camping trip or climb a mountain, although those can be great experiences. It's about making a conscious effort to engage with the natural world in your daily life. This could be as simple as stepping outside to feel the sun on your face, listening to the birds sing, or walking barefoot on grass. Think about it. We spend so much of our time indoors, surrounded by artificial lights and screens. We've become disconnected from the natural rhythms of the earth, and this disconnection can leave us feeling stressed, anxious, 
and out of sync. But when we take the time to reconnect with nature, even in small ways, we tap into something much bigger than ourselves. Here's how you can start incorporating this practice into your life. Every day, try to spend at least a few minutes outside. It could be a short walk in a nearby park, sitting in your backyard, or even just standing on your balcony. The key is to be present and engage your senses. Feel the breeze on your skin. Listen to the rustle of leaves. Watch the clouds move across the sky. Smell the scent of flowers or freshly cut grass. As you do this, you might notice something interesting happening. Your breathing might naturally slow down. Your shoulders might relax. The worries that seemed so pressing a moment ago might start to fade into the background. This is the calming effect of nature at work. But the benefits of connecting with nature go beyond just helping you relax. Studies have shown that spending time in nature can boost your mood, improve your cognitive function, and even strengthen your immune system. It can help reduce symptoms of depression and anxiety, lower blood pressure, and increase feelings of vitality and well-being. And here's something really fascinating. Connecting with nature can actually change your perspective on life. When you spend time among trees that have stood for hundreds of years, or gaze at stars that are light years away, it can help put your problems into perspective. Suddenly, that work deadline or argument with a friend doesn't seem quite so all-consuming. Nature has a way of reminding us of the bigger picture. It shows us that we're part of something much larger than our day-to-day -day concerns. And in doing so, it can help us find a sense of peace and belonging that's hard to come by in our busy modern lives. So, how can you deepen your connection with nature? Here are a few ideas. Take your shoes off and walk barefoot on grass or sand. This practice, sometimes called earthing, can help you feel grounded and connected to the earth. Start a small garden, even if it's just a few potted plants on your windowsill. Watching something grow and nurturing it can be incredibly rewarding. Observe the phases of the moon. This simple act can help you feel more in tune with natural cycles. Go for a nature scavenger hunt. Look for different types of leaves, rocks, or flowers. This can help you notice the diversity and beauty of the natural world around you. Sit quietly in nature and just observe Watch how animals behave, how plants move in the wind, how the light changes. This kind of quiet observation can be deeply meditative. Remember, the goal isn't to turn this into another item on your to-do list. It's about cultivating a sense of wonder and connection with the world around you. As you make this a regular practice, you might find yourself naturally wanting to spend more time in nature. You might start noticing the beauty of a sunset or the intricate pattern of a leaf in a way you never did before. And here's a beautiful thing about connecting with nature. It can enhance all the other practices we've talked about. Feeling the warmth of the sun on your skin can be a moment of gratitude. Watching a butterfly flit from flower to flower can be an opportunity for mindful breathing. And picking up litter in a park can be an act of kindness towards the earth and all its inhabitants. As you deepen your connection with nature, you might find that it becomes a source of comfort, inspiration, and renewal in your life. You might discover that no matter what's going on in your life, the natural world is always there, offering its quiet wisdom and healing presence. And in connecting with nature, you might just find that you're connecting more deeply with yourself. 
Now let's move on to our fifth practice, positive affirmations. This might sound a bit cheesy at first, but stick with me here, because this practice has the power to completely transform the way you think about yourself and your life. So, what exactly are positive affirmations? Simply put, they're positive statements that you say to yourself. They're like little pep talks that you give yourself throughout the day. But they're more than just empty words. When used consistently, affirmations can actually reshape your thought patterns and beliefs about yourself. Here's how it works. Every morning, look in the mirror and say something positive about yourself. It could be something like, I am worthy of love and respect, or I can handle whatever challenges come my way today. It might feel a bit awkward or silly at first, especially if you're not used to talking to yourself this way. But that's okay. The important thing is to keep doing it. Now you might be thinking, how can just saying nice things to myself make a difference? Well, it all comes down to how our brains work. You see, our brains are constantly forming neural pathways based on our thoughts and experiences. When we repeatedly think negative thoughts about ourselves, we strengthen the neural pathways associated with those thoughts, making it easier for our brains to go down those negative routes in the future. But here's the good news. We can create new positive neural pathways too. When we consistently practice positive affirmations, we're essentially rewiring our brains to think more positively about ourselves. Over time, these positive thoughts become more automatic, replacing the negative self-talk that many of us are used to. It's like creating a new habit for your mind. Just as you might train your body to crave healthy foods or enjoy exercise, you can train your mind to gravitate towards positive thoughts about yourself. But it's not just about feeling good in the moment. Positive affirmations can have a real impact on your life. When you truly believe that you're capable and worthy, you're more likely to take risks, pursue your goals, and bounce back from setbacks. You're less likely to let fear or self-doubt hold you back. In other words, positive affirmations can help you become the best version of yourself. So how do you get started with this practice? Here are a few tips. Choose affirmations that resonate with you. They should be positive statements that you want to believe about yourself, even if you don't fully believe them yet. Keep your affirmations in the present tense. Instead of saying, I will be confident, say, I am confident. Make your affirmation specific. Instead of a general, I am successful, try something like, I am successful in my career as a teacher. Say your affirmations with feeling. Really try to believe what you're saying. The more emotion you can put into it, the more powerful the affirmation becomes. Repeat your affirmations regularly. You might want to say them every morning when you wake up or write them down several times a day. Here are a few examples of positive affirmations you might want to try. I am capable of achieving my goals. I deserve love and respect. I am confident in my abilities. I choose to be happy and positive today. I am grateful for all the good in my life. Remember, the key is consistency. It might feel strange or even uncomfortable at first, especially if you're not used to saying nice things to yourself. You might even find that your mind resists, coming up with reasons why the affirmation isn't true. That's okay. 
it's a normal part of the process. Just keep going. As you make positive affirmations a regular part of your routine, you might start to notice some changes. You might find yourself feeling more confident, more resilient in the face of challenges. You might catch yourself thinking more positively throughout the day. And you might even notice that you're treating yourself with more kindness and compassion. But perhaps the most profound change you'll experience is in your relationship with yourself. By consistently affirming your worth and capabilities, you're cultivating a deeper sense of self-love and self-acceptance. And when you truly love and accept yourself, it becomes easier to navigate life's ups and downs with grace and resilience. So, give it a try. Choose an affirmation that resonates with you and start saying it to yourself every day. Remember, you're not trying to convince yourself of something that isn't true. You're simply reminding yourself of the truth of who you are. You are worthy, you are capable, and you have the power to shape your life in positive ways. And that's something worth affirming every single day. In our increasingly connected world, our sixth practice might seem a bit counterintuitive. It's all about disconnecting. We're talking about the power of a digital detox. Now, before you start worrying about missing out on important emails or your favorite social media updates, let me assure you, we're not talking about throwing your phone away. This is about creating intentional periods of time where you step away from the digital world and reconnect with the real world around you. Think about it. How much of your day do you spend looking at screens? between smartphones, computers, tablets, and TVs. Many of us spend more time interacting with digital devices than we do with real people. And while technology has brought many benefits to our lives, constant connectivity can also lead to stress, anxiety, and a feeling of being overwhelmed. That's where a digital detox comes in. It's about taking a break from your devices and using that time to be present in the moment. It's about giving your mind a chance to rest and reset, free from the constant stream of notifications, updates, and information. So how do you do a digital detox? It doesn't have to be extreme. You don't need to go off the grid for a week, although if you want to, that's great. You can start small. Here are a few ways to incorporate a digital detox into your life. Set aside specific times each day to be device-free. This could be during meals, the first hour after you wake up, or the last hour before bed. Designate certain areas of your home as tech-free zones. Maybe the dining room becomes a no-phone zone, or you keep devices out of the bedroom. Try a tech Sabbath. Choose one day a week to go completely device-free. When you're spending time with friends or family, make a pact to put phones away and focus on each other. When you're out in nature, leave your phone behind, or at least turn it off, and fully immerse yourself in the experience. Now, you might be wondering, what am I supposed to do during this device-free time? Well, that's the beauty of it. You can do anything. Read a book, have a face-to-face -face conversation, go for a walk, practice a hobby, or just sit quietly and let your mind wander. The important thing is that you're fully present in whatever you're doing without the distraction of digital devices. As you start incorporating digital detoxes into your routine, you might notice some interesting changes. You might find that you feel more relaxed, more focused, and more creative. You might start to enjoy your leisure time more, 
free from the nagging feeling that you should be checking your phone. You might even find that your relationships improve as you give people your full, undivided attention. But perhaps the most significant benefit of a digital detox is the way it can help you reconnect with yourself. In our hyper-connected world, it's easy to lose touch with our own thoughts and feelings. We're so busy consuming information and responding to others that we don't give ourselves time to just be. A digital detox creates space for self-reflection, introspection, and simply being present in your own life. It's also worth noting that a digital detox can enhance all the other practices we've talked about. It can give you more time for gratitude, make it easier to practice mindful breathing, create opportunities for acts of kindness, allow you to connect more deeply with nature, and provide quiet moments for positive affirmations. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but I need to be available. What if I miss something important? It's a valid concern, but consider this. Most things can wait. And for truly urgent matters, you can always let people know how to reach you in an emergency. The world won't fall apart if you're not instantly available 24-7. Remember, the goal of a digital detox isn't to completely eliminate technology from your life. It's about creating a healthier balance. It's about using technology intentionally rather than letting it use you. It's about reclaiming your time and attention and using them in ways that truly enrich your life. So I encourage you to give it a try. Start small if you need to, maybe just 30 minutes a day without devices. Pay attention to how you feel during this time and afterward. You might be surprised at how refreshing and liberating it can be to disconnect from the digital world and reconnect with the real world around you. As you practice digital detoxes more regularly, you might find that you start craving these periods of disconnection. You might discover a renewed appreciation for the simple pleasures of life, a face-to-face -face conversation, the feel of a book in your hands, the peace of a quiet moment. And in doing so, you might just find that you're living a richer, more present, and more fulfilling life. As we move into our seventh practice, we come to a topic that can be challenging but incredibly transformative, forgiveness. This isn't about forgetting or excusing harmful actions. It's about freeing yourself from the burden of anger and resentment. Forgiveness is a gift you give yourself, allowing you to move forward with a lighter heart and a clearer mind. Now, you might be thinking, but you don't know what they did to me. How can I forgive that? It's a valid question. Forgiveness isn't always easy, and it doesn't happen overnight. But here's the thing. Holding on to anger and resentment is like carrying a heavy weight. It drags you down, affects your mood, and can even impact your physical health. Forgiveness is about setting that weight down and freeing yourself. So how do you practice forgiveness? Start small. You don't have to tackle your biggest hurts right away. Maybe begin with forgiving someone for a minor slight, the person who cut you off in traffic, or the co-worker who took credit for your idea. As you practice forgiving these smaller things, you'll build the emotional muscles to tackle bigger issues. Here's a simple exercise you can try. Think of someone who has hurt you. Take a deep breath and say, either out loud or in your mind, I forgive you. I release the hurt and anger I've been holding on to. You don't have to mean it fully at first. Just the act of saying the words can start the process of healing. 
Remember, forgiveness doesn't mean you have to let that person back into your life or that you approve of what they did. It simply means you're choosing to let go of the negative emotions associated with the event. You're doing it for your own peace of mind. As you make forgiveness a regular practice, you might notice some changes. You might feel lighter, less stressed. You might find that you're able to move forward more easily rather than getting stuck in the past. And you might discover a greater sense of compassion, both for others and for yourself. Forgiveness is a powerful tool for personal growth and spiritual development. It allows you to free up emotional energy that you can then use for more positive pursuits. So give it a try. Start small, be patient with yourself, and remember, forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. Our eighth practice brings us to something we do every day, but often without much thought, eating. Mindful eating is about bringing your full attention to the experience of eating and drinking. It's about savoring your food, eating slowly, and really enjoying each bite. In our fast-paced world, it's easy to fall into the habit of eating on the go, multitasking during meals, or mindlessly snacking while watching TV. But when we eat this way, we miss out on the full experience of our food. We might overeat without realizing it, or fail to really enjoy and appreciate our meals. So, how do you practice mindful eating? Here are a few tips. Eat without distractions. Turn off the TV, put away your phone, and just focus on your meal. Take time to appreciate the appearance and smell of your food before you start eating. Eat slowly, chewing each bite thoroughly. Pay attention to the flavors, textures, and sensations of eating. Listen to your body's hunger and fullness cues. As you practice mindful eating, you might notice some interesting changes. You might start to enjoy your food more, even if you're eating the same things as before. You might find that you feel more satisfied with smaller portions, and you might develop a greater appreciation for the nourishment that food provides. Mindful eating can also help you develop a healthier relationship with food. Instead of seeing food as just fuel or as a source of comfort, you start to appreciate it as a sensory experience and a way to care for your body. Remember, like all of these practices, mindful eating takes time to develop. Don't worry if your mind wanders during meals at first. Just gently bring your attention back to your food. With practice, it will become more natural. Our ninth practice is all about taking time for self-reflection. In our busy lives, it's easy to go through our days on autopilot, reacting to situations without really thinking about why we're doing what we're doing. Self-reflection is about pausing to check in with yourself, to understand your thoughts, feelings, and actions. Here's a simple way to incorporate self-reflection into your daily routine. At the end of each day, Take a few minutes to ask yourself some questions. What went well today? What could I have done better? What am I grateful for? What did I learn? You might want to keep a journal for this practice. Writing down your reflections can help you process your thoughts and feelings more deeply. It also gives you a record to look back on, allowing you to see patterns and track your growth over time. As you make self-reflection a regular practice, you might start to notice some changes. You might become more self-aware, understanding your own motivations and reactions better. You might find that you're able to make decisions more easily, as you're more in tune with your own values and goals. And you might discover areas where you want to grow or change. 
Self-reflection is a powerful tool for personal growth. It helps you learn from your experiences, celebrate your successes, and identify areas for improvement. It's about becoming the author of your own life story, rather than just a character reacting to events. Our final practice is visualization. This is about using your imagination to create vivid mental images of what you want to achieve or experience. It's like daydreaming with a purpose. Here's how to do it. Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths to relax. Then imagine your goal as if it's already happened. See it in as much detail as possible. What does it look like? How does it feel? Engage all your senses in this mental picture. For example, if your goal is to run a marathon, imagine yourself crossing the finish line. Feel the exhilaration. Hear the cheers of the crowd. Feel the medal being placed around your neck. Make it as real and vivid as possible in your mind. Visualization works because it programs your brain to recognize the resources it needs to help you reach your goal. When you visualize, your brain sends signals to the cerebellum, the part responsible for movement, as if you were actually performing the action. This creates new neural patterns that can help you in real life. As you practice visualization regularly, you might find that you feel more motivated and confident about achieving your goals. You might notice opportunities that you hadn't seen before. And you might find it easier to take action towards your goals, as you've already experienced success in your mind. As we wrap up our exploration of these ten spiritual practices, it's important to remember that spirituality is a journey, not a destination. These practices are tools to help you along that journey, to help you connect more deeply with yourself, with others, and with the world around you. Each of these practices, from gratitude and mindful breathing to forgiveness and visualization, offers a unique way to enrich your life and deepen your spiritual connection. They work together, reinforcing and enhancing each other. For example, the calmness you cultivate through mindful breathing can make it easier to practice forgiveness. The self-awareness you develop through self-reflection can enhance your visualization practice. Remember, you don't have to perfect all of these practices at once. Start with one or two that resonate with you. Incorporate them into your daily routine. Be patient with yourself and remember that consistency is key. Over time, you'll likely find that these practices become not just something you do, but a part of who you are. As you integrate these practices into your life, you may notice some profound changes. You might find yourself feeling more peaceful, more connected, more alive. You might discover a deeper sense of purpose and meaning in your life. You might find that you're better able to navigate life's challenges with grace and resilience. But perhaps the most beautiful thing about these practices is that their benefits extend beyond just you. As you become more grateful, more mindful, more kind, more forgiving, you'll likely find that your relationships improve. You might inspire others around you to embark on their own spiritual journeys. In this way, your personal growth contributes to the betterment of the world around you. So I encourage you to embrace these practices. Make them a part of your daily life. Be curious, be open, and be patient with yourself. Remember, Every moment is an opportunity for growth and transformation. Every breath is a chance to begin anew. Your journey to a more spiritual life starts now, with this very moment. How will you choose to live it? The power is in your hands. May these practices guide you, 
support you, and help you uncover the deep well of peace, joy, and love that resides within you. Here's to your journey of spiritual growth and self-discovery. May it be rich, rewarding, and filled with moments of profound beauty and connection.